Welcome to our second edition here of Customizing GeoGebra. This is the intermediate level and I want to share with you five things that will make your life much better here with GeoGebra. Let's start out very quickly here and make sure we're in the right spot here. And I want to make sure you understand this is GeoGebra 4.0. All right, first thing we're going to talk about here is called point capturing. And I'm going to demonstrate this by selecting our new point area. And every place I click, you'll have a point. Let me show you what happens here when I click the mouse. Before I let the mouse button up, I can position it anywhere I want. Now if I get close to one of these intersection points, take a close look what happens. It looks like GeoGebra is actually grabbing that point and putting it on the intersection point, which is exactly what's happening. In other words, GeoGebra might say, I think you want this point right here at the coordinates 7, 5. And let's show you how that works. And if you go over here to Options and pull this down, you'll see something called Point Capturing. And it, right now it's set at Snap to Grid. A couple options I want to share with you here. First of all, fix to grid. We'll do something like this. I'm going to put the mouse right here and click. And you see what happens. GeoGebra automatically pulls that to an intersection point. Try that one more time and it's going to pull it to the closest intersection. So if you want to work with nothing but integer coordinates, that's what you can do. Third option here is you can take a look, uh, excuse me, point capturing here where you can turn it off. And then when you click, you can position this as close to an intersection point as you wish. So those are three of the options that I use. And I'm going to go back up here and go back to point capturing and put it on, on the way I usually do it, which is snap to grip. And a little review, I'll hit my escape key and that will move our icon back to the selection area. And I'll hold my control key down and press the letter A for all. And that selects everything. And I'll press my delete key and I've got a clean screen. Second thing I want to talk about here is, is rounding. And I'll just show you this. I won't demonstrate it. But right now you can round off any point or any value here pretty much to any type of situation you want. And standard one here is two decimal places in math classes, so I'll just leave it at that. Third item is moving the graphics window. This is very sweet. You'll never run out of screen real estate. To demonstrate this, I'll come over here and create some points. So I'll put one here and one here and one here. And right away you can see a pattern. If we go from A to B, we're going one step to the right and two steps up increasing the x value by 1, increasing the y value by 2. Very nice pattern you can see geometrically, you can also see that numerically. Now the problem comes in, when I want to go to letter D, it's off the grid. But we can solve that, come right over here and click this, and it says move the graphics view. So I'll come back in here and you see that the cursor changes, and I'll click my left mouse button, and I can move this anywhere I want. So I'm going to come down here, and that will give us enough room to put in point D. So I'll select our points, put in point D, put in point E, and oops, we have the same problem. The issue that we have here is that although I can keep moving this down, eventually I'm going to run out of room and I can't see all the points. And that leads us to the fourth option here, the fourth thing I want to share with you, which is zooming in and zooming out. And I'll hit my escape key. Now, most mice have a wheel and I'm going to move my wheel in one direction and then in the other direction. So you can zoom in and zoom out as much as you want. And now if I zoom out I can go and grab my graphics window and and now I can move this down and accommodate more points. So with those two options you have a lot of control and there's other ways to adjust the window size too and, and uh, I'll let you explore that on your own. So let's put this back into standard view. I'll hit my escape key and to get the standard view I'm going to right click on my mouse which brings up some options and I'll just come right back here to standard view which puts us back where we started. I'll go control A one more time and give us a clear screen. Last thing that I want to share with you is the internationality of GeoGebra. From a language point of view, if I come up here again to options and go to language, here are the languages that GeoGebra has been translated into. And it's absolutely fantastic. In the United States we have many Spanish speakers and I'll demonstrate this right here in GeoGebra. Just click this and the entire program is now translated into 
Spanish. For instance, Ventana is window, and I'll pull that down. And Opciones is options, and Vista is view. And you can see everything that uh, was formerly in English is now in Spanish. And I'll go back to options, and idioma is language. And I'll put this back to English, and a curious thing here, you notice there are actually three versions of English. And I'll just put it back to the U.S. English, and we're back home. And so those are the five things that will get you going, help you on your road to customizing GeoGebra. And I'll leave you with a quote here from Stan Gooder, who's the John Evans Professor of Mathematics, University of Denver. And he said, the essence of mathematics is not to make simple things complicated, but to make complicated things simple. And GeoGebra is such an example. It's a tremendous piece of software that allows you to simply explain lots of mathematics. So teachers, students, and math fans everywhere, enjoy.